Well, one of the most critical things about making a bandsaw cut the way it's supposed to is having good sharp blades. We're going to talk about the Norwood blade sharpening system and how it can give you the types of blades that will give you professional cuts and uh, serve you well on the sawmill. So let's uh, take a look at uh, what it's going to take first of all to set up the sharpener, then to set the blades up uh, for sharpening, and then finally the actual sharpening of the blade itself. You only need a few basic tools to set up the sharpening system. You need a set of Allen wrenches and there are some tools that come with it for putting the stone on. We'll start with that. So take off the cover shield. One of the wrenches goes on the back side to hold the motor shaft and it's easy to put, easiest to put that on before you mount the wheel. Then the wheel goes on and then the nut and it is conventional right hand thread. So that goes on. It doesn't need to be killer tight, but you do want it to be pretty snug. Okay, so that's in place. Shield goes back on the way it came off. Allen bolts go back in place. A bit. There. Now that's all there is to it. Next step is to put on the blade holder. And that's a pretty straightforward device. Alright, so setting up the blade. Simply rides on those three arms. Slides in place and it needs to be flat. And I have it going on the inside, on, on, the, on the left and on the far side. And then I have it going on the outside of the ruler. And that seems to work pretty consistently and keep, keeps it moving and holds it um, even. You want to avoid any kind of tendency for it to rock or lift out of that holder. So right now I've got the wheel so it just stays up all the time and you can see as you turn the wheel it follows it around, drops down and advances to the next tooth. This uses a 12 volt system which makes it easy to use out in the field if you need to. You can run it right off the sawmills battery, uh, your truck battery. I like to use a deep cycle battery that I also use for my winch and other devices or you could even use it straight off of a battery charger if you needed to. Now let's see if we can put an edge on this blade. Okay so got everything in place and we're going to turn the handle and you can see the blade is kind of hitting that tooth. and resting on it. So what that means is the pusher isn't pushing the blade far enough between cuts and if we tried to sharpen the blade like it is right now it'll take off too much of the tooth at a time, it'll heat up the metal and soften it so in general that's a, a bad thing. So what we're going to do is adjust forward a little bit and try it again. And you can see now it's not even touching, which isn't bad. We, we need to, it's pushing a little too far, so we're going to back it off a bit. And you got to just barely hear it scratch a little. Yeah, hear that? That's probably pretty close to right. Then the next thing to do is to set the gullet. 
and it's a pretty similar process that controls how much metal it takes out in the cut uh, underneath the blade and that's important because that has to deal with the blades ability to pull sawdust out of the cut so turning this in takes less of a cut turning it outwards or counterclockwise as you look down lets it drop down a little bit further and it's very similar you're going to kind of listen to it scritch a little bit if if it's right up down That might be a bit much, so we're going to lift it just a bit. Try again. A little bit of scratch as it sharpens the blade. That's a pretty good place to start. What we're going to do is try it there and then adjust it until it just barely throws out a good shower of sparks. So the main thing, too, is that you want to have safety gloves on and safety glasses because it can throw sparks and small pieces of metal uh, which could run into your face. So we're going to turn it on and let's see how it's going here. So we're not doing anything. So the first thing we're going to do is to back off the, the feed so it doesn't push it quite as far first one won't have any effect. The next one, this is the one we're looking for. Just a bit. And that's really all the cutting we're looking for. Just barely nicking it. Now we'll go ahead and adjust the gullet. It needs to drop down a little further. So we're going to screw this, the height adjustment back a little. That might be a little more than what we'd like. I'm going to raise it up just a bit. Now once you get it the way you want it, and it's cutting right, what I'll do is come in with some white out, and I'll mark it. So that's the starting point. When it, when it comes back around to that mark, then I'll know that that blade is sharp all the way around and ready to go. Oh, one thing I've learned to do is to use uh, colored wire. This comes actually from telephone cable and you can use the colors to code out for different types of situations. For example, these are Norwood's uh, gold line blades and so I use green wire for that and wrap it around all three sections like that. Give it a twist and that tells me, the color tells me what kind of blade at a glance I'm picking up and the fact that it's wrapped around all three holding it together tells me it's a sharp blade. Now when I take the blade off the mill after cutting and, and it's ready to be sharpened I just take the wire put it back on but, but I only put it on one strand of the blade instead of around all three and that tells me that it's a blade that's ready to be sharpened. If you learn just a few of the basics, sharpen your blades consistently and have a really good sharpening system like the Norwood sharpener and you've always got blades ready to go.